Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to make contact sheets in Lightroom. Theme tune! Boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -boo. Boo -boo -boo -boo. <laughs> That's not even a dance. That's not even a dance. Not a dance. Okay, wasn't even a dance. So, contact sheets, what are they? Well, essentially, you take loads of photographs um, on a shoot for a client, say, and then you have 300 photographs and you want to show those to the client. But rather than exporting 300 little tiny images, each with your watermark on it and sending it through in an email or having a website that they can go view them on or whatever, that can be very tedious and be a lot of work and then the client always has to flick through loads of things. A contact sheet comes from the days of printing, where you would, at the end of a shoot, print a sheet of paper with all the little tiny images on, and you'd go along and you'd have a look with a magnifying glass at which images you liked. That's still actually massively useful even today, because maybe you don't have the internet to use, or maybe you don't want to use an online thing, or maybe just for ease, you just want to email this contact sheet over and get it to them. Well, Lightroom allows you to do this really easily and we do it in the print module. So let's jump into Lightroom and have a look. So here we are inside Lightroom, and essentially we have all of these photographs. So I've just got a catalog here full of all my things that I do on YouTube. And uh, so if I, let's have a look, there's 167 photos. So if I want to create a contact sheet, I go over here to print, which is in the top right hand corner, and I click on this, okay? And then down the side section here, we all have all of these templates that Lightroom has got built in. They actually have two contact sheets already made for us. So if we go here, this is a contact sheet which is built in. Now, the contact sheet is built out of the images that you have selected. So for example, I now have one image selected, but if I hit Command A, select all of them, now it's going to add all of them to the contact sheet. And I can see down here, I have nine pages. And I can scroll through the pages, like so, and it's gonna move the timeline for me and it's gonna show me all of the different images, which is great. Now, another feature that you have is down here you can choose to go for only the flagged photos or all photos in the film strip or just the ones you select. So for example, I could go, well, I want this one and I also want this one and then this one and this one and then this one. And then I could scroll along and say, and this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm just holding command while I do that, and it's gonna build that for me. But today we're gonna to just select all of them. So this is essentially how we build a contact sheet. Now in the side here, we have loads of options that we can add things to this. Now, the first thing that we can do here is you can choose to zoom the image to fit into the box shape or size that you've selected, or you can select so that it just keeps it in its rotation and doesn't zoom at all. I usually do that. What you can also do is if you're gonna want to print them and have, you wanna cut them all out and have multiples of the same one, you can actually select repeat one per page. I've never had to use that. The other thing is to add a small border. People actually do seem to like to do this little black border just to frame things. Again, I don't use that, but that's where the feature is. Now at this point, I would like to point out the size of the page. You can change this, okay, really easily by going to page setup, and then you can select a page size. So I could say, go, well, I wanna do it on an eight by 10 size. So I could select eight by 10, like so, and then it's gonna change that to that size, and then it's gonna format everything within that. So again, page setup, and then you can come in and select, and you could have had your own options down here as well, which you can add in. I, however, am happy to leave it, say, like this for now for this tutorial. Now, the next thing we get to do is over here, is you can change anything that you want, essentially. So you can change the margin on the left-hand side by just moving this slider, okay? And then the same with the right, and the same with the top, and the same with the bottom. Really, really simple. So for example, you wanna put a header on this, you can just add something on the top so you can have your logo put at the top, which is awesome. Now the next thing is page grid. So essentially, how many rows do you want, which goes across the page, and how many columns that go down the page. So for example, I might say I wanna have just two rows and one, and say three columns. Okay, that looks great, but what I haven't got is any kind of a margin so that these images are now touching each other. 
So what I could come down here is I can add into the horizontal margin. I can move this slider and you will see that it's going to move the images away from each other. So I'm going to boost this to four and four, for example. That looks great. And what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little bit more of a um, space in between them. And therefore, actually, I know that I can add in another column like so. OK, it's a little cluttered, but we, we get the idea. So that's looking great. Now, what you can do is you can actually unselect keep square. Now what you can do is you can change the actual size of the cell. So you could make the cell any size that you want. So, for example, you could make it like this size means that it's going to work well for your um, landscapes, but your portraits aren't as good. But if you were to change that round, OK, it's going to mean that your portrait is going to be good and not good for your landscapes. Keeping square, OK, what that will essentially do is just mean that the images are rotated with inside a square. Great. Now, the next thing that you can do is you can show the guides. Now, this is while you're working within this. So you can see, OK, you can add your ruler at the top, but this is only while you're working. This isn't printed. OK, these things are not actually printed at all. This is just to give you the guide while you're working with it. But things that are printed are things like here. You can change the background color of the page. For example, you could make gray. I don't know. I've never had to use that, but that's where you can do it. The next thing is identity plate. So by selecting this, you can bring in your identity plate. OK, so I have one which is called photos in color, but you can edit that and you can literally do whatever you want to do within that. Um, so I'm going to have this and then I can pick it up and I can actually move my identity plate to be, say, down the side over here. And the text is white, so it's not going to show up, but you get the idea. And here you can change the opacity of that and also change the size of that. So if you wanted to put your logo at the top, you could do that easily. OK, so let's just come back up here. Actually, I'm going to reduce this margin at the top because we're not actually going to need it. Like so, and let's just add some spacing. Great. So the next thing that you're able to do is watermarking. Now, this is really important. By selecting watermark, what it's going to do is you can choose one of your own watermarks to go in over the top one of these. So for example, I run stock pick and I can run a stock pick over every single one of these images, which means the client can't just steal the image, which is really, really fantastic if you need to do that. OK. So let's take that off for now. Um, I also have, for example, inside here, photos in color with a white signature. And hold on, like so. No, I don't. So, uh, so I also have a photos in color one. So if we put photos in color, you can see at the bottom corner it's added photos in color. But let's just for today's sake, leave it on stop pick. Uh, in fact, stopping new because it's got all the little ones. Great. Now, the next thing that you're able to do, and this is really important, is what information you put on here. Now, this is how your client is going to reference an image. So I'm going to like Lucy Scarf 216. It means that you know which image they're talking about. But you can do different things. So what you can actually do is you can come in as, and you can put in a sequence. So on this, I know I have 167 photos and they like number one or they like number 14. So you could do it that way. Another way is you could do it by date and it's going to print the date on it just in case that that's another way of doing it. Or you could do it by the caption if you've created captions within the library module. For today's case, I'm going to leave it R or you can create sorry custom text. So here you could write uh, test contact sheet. And now you see all of those images say test contact sheet. Um, but I'm going to leave it as file name for today. And I can actually make this smaller to size six because they don't need to be very big. Great. This is starting to look like a contact sheet. Now, now you've got this far. It's looking awesome. Nine pages. OK, and you can now send it to the printer to be printed. But most of the time you're going to want to email this. So all you have to do is you select printer and then you go to PDF at the bottom here. Hit save as PDF. OK, and then we're just going to call this test contact sheet. Um, OK, and hit save. We come out of Lightroom and now have a look at this on the desktop. 
test contact sheet. If I open up this, you can see we have this test contact sheet all ready to go and we can just send this to a client in no time whatsoever. You could literally make this in 30 seconds. So that's how to make a contact sheet in Lightroom really easily. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Definitely leave me a comment and if you have any questions or any ideas for other tutorials, drop it in a comment or head over to the Photos in Color Facebook page and you can always write to me there. Anyway, this was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Booyah.